Good day, everyone. This is Dr. Carlson, and this is another installment of Osteopathic Clinical Skills. So we're going to go through this really quick before we present with the actual filming of the patient's skill. Remember, we want to remember our external eye structures with the sclera, the iris, and the pupil, and the cornea, noting how that corresponds to internal structures like the macula, the fova, as well as the optic disc or your blind spot. Remember that when you look at the retina, the optic disc or the blind spot is gonna be the place where all of the vessels come out. That's gonna be a little bit more lateral on your exam. And your macula or where you have the greatest concentration of rods, cones, and the kind of neural collecting spot on your eye is gonna be more medial. And so when you look at a eye, even if it's an image, you'll be able to differentiate as to which eye it is. When we talk about using our ophthalmoscope, we want to remember that the cobalt filter is used with fluorescein dye. The slit lamp is used to do levels of lesions on the eye, as in, is it superficial or deep? And the red filter is used when you're using it on a dilated eye to be able to see veins, arteries, and nerve fibers. All of these are settings that you have on the head of your ophthalmoscope. The size of the aperture is gonna be related to if you're dealing with small undilated pupils for your micro spot aperture, your small aperture is gonna be used on the majority of your undilated eyes with your large aperture using the standard for dilated pupils. So this is a picture of your ophthalmoscope with someone looking into the eye. We wanna remember that to clearly visualize the external structures, you're gonna start out at about 12 inches away from the eye and use either an upward motion on your diopter scale, which is gonna give you more of a negative setting and a downward motion for more of your positive settings. Remembering that a hyperopic eye is going to move more into the green, which is more positive settings. A myopic eye or nearsighted eye is gonna go more into the red, which is the negative settings. Things again that you're looking for on the examination, your fundoscopic examination is gonna be the coloration, the shape, and the blood vessels if they're elevated, if they're overlapping, causing what is called AV nicking within your fundoscopic examination. As you're looking at your standard retina, again, you're gonna see a little bit more off to the lateral your part of the eye, which is the optic disc, your blind spot. Notice all those big vessels coming out, and then you're looking directly at the macula, which is that focus area where a lot of your visual data is going to be input. We're gonna go now to the live examination and our two performers. We'd like to thank Jeff and Deshaun for helping us out today. So, as things may happen, our models today are actually Jeremy and not Jeffrey and Deshaun. So here we go with our models. Hello, I'm student Dr. Stevens. I'm gonna be doing your eye exam today. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna check pupils are reactive to light and accommodation. Notice how the student doctor is checking each eye and then also checking for consensual response. He's now checking for accommodation with an expectation that as he moves his finger towards the patient's nose, eyes will dilate and the pupils will move toward midline. He's now checking the extraocular motions by having the patient follow the finger without moving his head. Can you cover one eye for me? I want you to tell me how many fingers I'm holding up. None. One. Looking at my nose, tell me how many fingers I'm holding up. One. The student doctor is now testing. Can you uh, add the numbers together? Two. Confrontational fields. We will now move along to the ophthalmic examination. The good student doctor has already focused his ophthalmoscope on his hand by setting the diopters to zero on the ophthalmoscope and then visualizing a fixed distance of approximately 12 inches to the back of his hand. He then moves either in the upward direction, which is negative, or the downward direction, which is positive, to focus a fixed distance in between his hand 
and the ophthalmoscope so he knows what that distance is focused. He will then move to the patient's face. The student doctor will look through his right eye to the patient's right eye and patient's left eye to patient doctor's left eye. Note that the doctor is holding up the patient's brow while he moves in and focuses on the lens. He will then adjust his diopter setting, either in the positive or negative direction, up or down, to be able to focus in on the structures in the deep eye, on the fundus. He will ask the patient to continue to look forward to be able to examine the macula, the optic disc, and then moving and following each one of the blood vessels from the optic disc out into the four quadrants. Notice how the doctor is just subtly making changes in his position to be able to view different parts of the patient's retina. Notice in this example, the student doctor is examining the patient's left eye with his left eye, and if he wants to examine the patient's macula, he needs to have the patient look directly at him. Look into the light. We're going to now quickly talk about the Snellen chart. You'll notice that the Snellen chart is placed on a wall in a place that's easily observable from approximately 20 feet away. If you're using the handheld Snellen charts for people who are myopic, you want to make sure that you utilize the distance that's recommended on the chart that you're using. For this full-size one in a doctor's office, you're going to have the patient stand approximately 20 feet away. The student doctor will now direct the patient in how to do the exam. Can you cover one eye? Yes. Can you start here? F, P, okay. T, O, Z, All right. L, P, E, D, P, E, C, F, D, E, D, F, C, Z, P, F-E-L-O-P-Z-D D-E-T-P-O-T-E-C L-E-P-O-D-F-C-T So now what you're doing is you will note that the patient had the easiest time with the least amount of mistakes at the line that says 2020. We would then note that he had easy viewing at 2025, but he had difficulty at 2015. This patient's visual acuity then for his eye would be then at the 2020. You then have the patient repeat this for the other eye at the same distance. Do remember that the patient was covering this eye just a few seconds ago, so give them a little bit of time. 